welcome guys to another BBA tip. So today's episode is going to be the first part of a mini series which is really just going to go over what we call monthly maintenance which is a sort of schedule or a regime that we do on a monthly basis just really to keep our gear in tip top condition. Right so for this episode we're going to focus on our maintenance schedule for the boat. So we've just come out of an extended period of lockdown so this has actually been getting quite a bit of use on a monthly basis. So boats as with most mechanical things they don't like to be stood still so that's why we kind of have this regime that we do on a monthly basis usually around the start of the month and it's really just to try and keep our gear in as good a condition as possible uh, things seize up batteries go flat and that's not the type of thing that you want happening when you're out and about in your adventures so as I said this first episode we're going to focus on, on the boat right so we have the Quintrex 450 Fisherbout Pro with 60 horsepower Mercury so in terms of maintenance we're going to break it down into the boat the motor and then the trailer. So what we're going to do is just have a general look over so just look around the hole for any cracks, any dents, anything like that well, inside and out just have a sort of a general look at the body of the boat. So we have a dual battery setup. We've got the, the primary battery here on the left and then over on the right hand side, we've got our secondary battery. So the first thing we're gonna do is just check the voltage on those two batteries. All right, so with our voltmeter, we're gonna measure the voltage. So obviously they're a 12 volt battery. So we wanna be somewhere in the 12 volt range. So anything above about 12.4 would be good. So 12.4 is roughly about half, about half full. So with the primary battery, we're looking at 12.7 volts. So that's pretty good. Right, then we're going to do the same for the secondary battery. Ooh, 10.9 volts, so not very good at all. So this one's definitely going to need to have some charging. Right, so we'll charge the batteries right at the end. Next, we're going to look at the motor. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to run the motor for a period of time, get it nice and warm. And what we want to do is get that grease going around and all the propeller shaft and all that type of stuff and just get it running. It won't like being standing there, it's going to corrode up, things like that. So it's important that we run the engine. Right, so I've just lowered the motor down and that's so that it sits square so that all the water doesn't just sort of sit in the propeller shaft. We're going to run the motor out of the water. It's really important that we use these, what are called earmuffs. So what we've got to do is get the water to flow through the engine. That's not, it's going to overheat very, very quickly. So we have to get a good seal with these and we have to make sure that the water's going through the motor as it's running, okay? Because if not, we're going to stuff the engine up. So the earmuffs are going to sit around these vents here and this is what, what sucks the water in. So we'll just fit those. Right, so they just want to go both sides and just make sure they sit completely over the, the, the water inlets. And then what we'll do is we'll attach our hose pipe to this section and switch it on before we turn the engine of the boat on. <clears throat> so just make sure you get a good seal on the hose. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start it up. I'm going to run it at idle in for five minutes. Um, and then I'm going to put it into, into forward uh, about 2,000 revs just to get the propeller spinning, get it a bit of revs and leave it like that for five minutes. I'm then going to put it in reverse and back up to 2,000 revs for another five minutes and then five more minutes at the end just idling again, just enough time to get all the, the, the grease and things and everything working in the propeller. Right, another thing to bear in mind, just make sure the hose is nice and straight so there's no kinks in it. So you want to see the water pouring out like this before you start the motor up. So then what, what you want to see is the water coming out as a jet. That means that it's circulating and keeping the engine cool. And we're going to run that like that for five minutes. So another thing to think about when you're doing this stuff, don't ever leave it just in case that hose detaches itself because you're going to stuff the engine up pretty quickly if that happens and there's no water going in. Right, so we're around the five minute mark now, so we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is put it into forward and then run it at about 2,000 revs just to get the revs up in the, in the motor. So that's just over 2,000 revs now, so I'll run that for another five minutes in forward at 2,000 revs. Revs back and 
then put it into reverse and do the same thing. So the last things I'm going to do while the engine's still idling is I'm going to turn the steering wheel back and, backwards and forwards a number of times and what that will do is just get that steering mechanism working because that can sometimes seize up a bit and get a bit corroded so just, just to make sure that mechanism is, is working okay and also I'm going to tilt the, the motor up and down, backwards and up and down as well. Right, so this steering mechanism is actually really tight as you can see, so I'm, I'm slowly sort of working it backwards and forwards, trying to get it to unlock. So try not to be too forceful, because it's probably where it's been stood for a while again. It doesn't seem to be moving. So this is why we do the checks, because as you can see, I couldn't turn the steering wheel. So somewhere in the steering arm, it's probably corroded because it's been stood here a long time. So this is exactly why we do this. It was a little bit stiff about a month ago, the last time I did it. So I think we might have to have a look at that and see how that works. So this is why we do the monthly maintenance and we're not stuck on the water with an engine that we can't turn. Right, so this will be the problem area, this steering arm, it's stuck, it's not moving. So what that does is connected to the steering wheel and it allows the, the motor to turn. So it's obviously corroded in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just put some WD-40 in and see how that goes. Well, it's actually quite fitting actually, and this is the reason why we wanna sort of keep an eye on our maintenance. So I have actually got a problem with that steering. So what's happening is, it appears to have seized up. There's a there's a little like piston um, that that attaches to the linkage of the steering wheel, and when you turn it, it turns the the, the motor, and that appears to to have seized up. And actually, when, and when I think back before lockdown, when we were in the boat, I did sometimes see some some emulsified grease that had sprayed out around that area, and I wasn't sure where it had come from. And I think that's probably where it did come from. And now because we haven't used the boat for so long, it's seized up. And the last time I did this about a month ago, um, I did it. Did it did feel a bit stiff, but it sort of freed itself up when I started to play with the steering wheel. And um, that wasn't happening today, and it appears to have, yeah, completely seized up. So I've tried some WD-40 and whacking it with a mallet just to try and free that piston, but it didn't seem to work. And what, what I really need is a grease gun, which I don't have. So I'm just on my way to Autobahn now to get a grease gun, and then I'm gonna take it apart and try and prise it open with a, with a pair of mole grips and just some grease and just try and free it up. So yeah, let's see how we so go. The problem is with this steering arm, so that's all stiff inside. So I've tried to tap this and spray WD-40 in, um, but it's just not moving. All right, so we've got the grease gun. That's a bit cheap. It's too big. Right, so that's not going to work because the grease gun's too long. So what we're going to have to do is take this nut off and then just try and prise this out the best we can. Take this arm off and then try and force that, that this piston in and just try and sort of free it up really. It's a shame we can't get the grease in there but we're just gonna have to do the best we can. So maybe I won't be able to do this after all, which will be a shame, because it's a pretty straightforward fix, I think. So just pry, that's quite stiff. Yeah, that's not coming easily either. Try and prise this one out. That's got him. So it's definitely there because the actual motor's moving, so it's definitely this this part. Okay, so that's good. That's good. So what I'm going to try and do now is just grab this with the the mole grips and try and sort of free it up a bit. Yeah, that's better. So that's moving. Try and prise it. Yeah. 
trouble is it's not going in and out. That's what we need it to do. Right, so nothing's ever straightforward, is it? So I think that is the problem. I did manage to, to free up that piston. It did start to move up and down, but I really need to get some grease in it to really get it to move sort of backwards and forwards. And unfortunately that grease gun I just bought didn't fit, it's too long. So I just phoned up Autobahn and apparently they have a flexible hose which will work. So here I am back to Autobahn. So fingers crossed, this should work. So we'll see you back at the boat. Right, I think we're in business. The grease gun now fits inside the boat, which is awesome. Plenty of grease in there. Try and prise that, get that grease going. It's definitely easier, but it's still not going in. See, it's moving, but it, I just it just won't move in and out. It's not moving at all. It's looser than it was, but I just can't seem to get that no, steering arm to go back in. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this today. So the next plan is we'll try one more thing. I might go and get the high lift jack and jack this side of the boat up and just spray some WD-40 in, in, that, in that bit and just try and let it sort of penetrate overnight. So what I'll do is I'll hook the car up to the front just to have it a bit more stable and then just try and jack this side up a bit so that it's sort of an, under gravity. So hopefully the WD-40 will penetrate. Right, so once again, nothing straightforward. Um, so the jack's only got about that much for the trailer. Plus, as soon as I start to jack, I know what's gonna happen. It's gonna start to push this end inwards, which is gonna push into the boat. So I have to try the bottle jack instead. The, the, the high lift's not gonna work. All right, so even this isn't straightforward. I've run out of lift on the jack so I'm going to pull the jack out I've got some bricks under the tires under the tire and then I'll put another piece of wood that's thicker and just try and get that a little bit more height we're pretty much level at the moment so I want the boat to just tilt that way so we can spray WD-40 into that into that arm try again right that should do the let it's definitely tilting that way now like I'll just show you on there on the level so we're definitely looking in the right direction right so what i'm going to do is just keep spraying and hoping that that penetrates downwards it's definitely going down now so hopefully that will that will go in so i'm going to keep spraying over and over again leave it all night and then we'll come back in the morning and just see what we can do that's all we can do now so what is all up, and we haven't even finished yet, is usually a 40 minute, 50 minute job, is now, I'm into it, it's hour number five. <laughs> so it doesn't normally take that long, but I would rather this be doing this here in this garden than on the water. So that's why we do our monthly maintenance. So it's the following morning. I did lots of research on YouTube last night, and that does appear to be a fairly common problem. And what I was doing is how to fix it. So let's see if the WD-40 is penetrated moment of truth let's see how we go still can't move it which is really annoying um, I think I'm gonna be able to do it so look that's definitely the way to do it but this is just just having none of it so I'm gonna to have to take it to the mechanic I think to get it freed up but it is a pretty common fault so it's a good job we checked it um, but what we will do, we'll just continue with the rest of the other checks um, just to finish the episode really. The next thing we're going to do is just check the tyre pressures with this digital tyre pressure monitor. Pretty good. So that one's a little bit on the low side, so we'll just put some air in that. Also check the wheel nuts. 
button and check the spare, just make sure, sure the nuts are up. Oh, see, another problem, that one's come loose. Um, where's my spanner? That's why we have to do these checks. Yeah, that's really loose, that one. So, so is that one. So just point those up. Next is the jockey wheel, so just wind them up. Oh, looks pretty good. Just in the springs as well. All good. Then similar to what we did with the boat, we're just going to walk around and just check the, the trailer itself for any knocks, dints, anything like that, cracks, and just tighten up all the nuts. Right, so the last thing we're going to do is take the trailer for a spin because when we're reversing the trailer back into the drink to get the boat off, those wheel bearings are not going to like that salt water. So we're just going to give them a run, get them nice and warm, get the grease rolling around the bearings so that we don't have wheel bearing problems in the future. But before we do that, we're just going to do the usual checks that we'd always do when we take the boat out. Just make sure the straps are nice and tight, make sure the, the tow hitch is con connected properly, that we've got the safety chains on, things like that. Just the usual checks that we would do. So I like to be methodical about these things and start from one end and just work our way around uh, so that we don't miss anything. So the other thing we like to do is just put a piece of wood just in there really and then just close that down and what that does is just take that load off of that ram uh, just, especially when we're driving up and down and it's bouncing it just, it just uh, helps protect it. And then finally just check for obvious wear on the strap. Looks good. So that went well. Last thing now is just to charge those batteries. So we'll start with that second battery because that was the lowest. We'll leave that on for 48 hours and then we'll charge the primary one for 24 hours. And then that's it. So the secondary battery is now at 13.44 volts. And that's the primary battery on charge. Right, so another 24 hours has passed. We're just going to check that primary battery now and just see how that's holding up. Right, so last time this one was about half charged. Let's see how we're traveling now. 13.16, nice. It's a couple of weeks later and I'm just dropping the boat off at the boat mechanics. We're back in business, 
the guys at Penrith Marine have done a fantastic job and we're 250 bucks lighter in the wallet, but that's okay. Speaking to the guys there, it is a pretty common problem. They said this one was really seized up, which I can definitely vouch for that. Uh, but what they've got, they've adapted a tool to an air gun because they're, they're doing this all the time. So they've, they've created an, their own tool. So it's a lot easier for them to do than it was for me. But I did, I spoke to them about what I was doing um, and they said, yeah, that's the way you, you would do it. You just try and prize it free. But if it's really corroded like mine was, um, then that's going to be an issue. I highly recommend Penrith Marine. They're really good. Like we've had, we've only had really good service with Penrith Marine. We've had um, some pretty dodgy experiences with a couple of the other guys around the place, but Penrith Marine were awesome. That's pretty much it for part A of our monthly maintenance mini series. It has taken me a lot longer than I expected, but that's okay. This, these things happen. Um, so stay tuned for part B, where we're going to be looking at our Jayco Outback Swan camper trailer. So just going over some basic. Uh, checks really again nothing too sophisticated just the monthly checks that we do just to make sure that that we don't get into these types of dramas with the Jayco so yeah stay tuned for that one so if you got something out of this episode then give us a thumbs up if you want to see more of this mini series then stay tuned for the next episode and if you like our broader channel then don't forget to hit that subscribe button there because that really helps us build the channel and we really appreciate it guys um, and don't forget to follow us on instagram facebook and twitter and we'll see you again soon in the next episode take it easy bollers